What's up and welcome to Brando's World of X Games. Now joining us fresh off of their gold medal performances in Real Street, Chase Webb and Chris Ray. What's going on, boys? What's up, Not man? Much. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank okay. you. Okay, yeah, before we get going, obviously we're still in the midst of, uh, of quarantine, still very heavy in, uh, in California. So uh, I guess how's... How's uh, self-isolation been for you guys the last couple of months? Chase, we'll start with you, man. How's it been? Nothing much has changed. I mean, I'm still skating a little bit. So, I mean, I'm always around a small group of people and I'm just, uh, I'm just cruising, man. Yeah. And how about for you, Chris? I, I wonder, it's, uh, it must be not too different for you, right? Like you're just kind of working at your, uh, at your edit bay at home, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah, it's been, it's actually, I'm, I'm super fortunate because we, we happen to shoot a bunch of stuff for DC before all this happened. And I have a ton of edits that were lined up. So it's kind of a blessing in disguise uh, for me because I have to be locked down. I have to be editing during this time. So nothing's really changed. It's worked out with my schedule. Great. Obviously, everybody in, in skateboarding certainly knows uh, Chris Ray and, and what you bring to the table. But I think for a lot of people you know, you get your filmer and maybe they're a homie that films for you or, you know, films for a team. Chris, you're, you're perhaps the busiest filmer that I know uh, as far as other full-time gigs and commitments are concerned. And yet you've done this contest perhaps more than anyone. You've meddled more than any other filmer. Um, how do you balance that out? Like something like this versus like your actual day-to-day -day job? You know what? I'm still trying to figure it out, to be honest. Um, it, it may it may look super easy and, and simple like that. But, uh, you know, on top of, you know, doing full time stuff for D.C. and always doing real street. I've got two kids that are probably going to be screaming in the background. Uh, so full family and everything like that. But uh, it's really just it's my passion and it's what I love to do. So, um, you know, I just I love doing it. And I think that's the key. You know, I mean, they always say, like, you know, just do what you love and it won't feel like work. And. It really does feel like that. You know, I just, I enjoy doing it. So it's a repeat back to back mm -hmm. gold medals. And uh, I remember last year, Chase, you said something along the lines of like, you had never really done anything quite like this as far as a contest is concerned. So you were really taking Chris's lead and uh, he certainly led you to the promised land. What about <laughs> this year in 2020, knowing that maybe now you got the target on your back because, uh, everybody's gunning for that top spot like were you still like Chris what can we do here or did you come with more of a game plan of like hey I'd like to do these tricks or hit these spots yeah we uh we me and Chris always work together and I definitely have like ideas and I just run them by him and there's you know we just we're always skating so there wasn't nothing uh too new about going into it this year other than we just wanted to like just outdo ourselves from last year so we just had that on our like the top of the list just just try to do better than last year and yeah yeah and that was on full display right out the gate the exact same spot in the open for this year except you upped the ante with that kickflip onto that massive i don't know what you call that that overpass wall that was just yep. psycho how long did like how long was that brewing for you even thinking like hey I know what we did last year can I go back and kickflip this thing Yeah initially when I first went there last year and did the ollie I wanted to kickflip it so like in my mm -hmm. head I already made that claim and that was like definitely like since the day I ollied it I knew I wanted to kickflip it and I was like what better way to do it just like do it for real street since I uh, did the ollie already so I was like let's just do the kickflip now Let's get it out of the way and i have to imagine like your part for pizza dropping just a couple of months ago maybe even six weeks ago and then all of a sudden it feels like you're sprinting to get footage for this what was it like for you chase i know there was like a little bit of an injury there uh mm -hmm. early in the year too so how did you balance that out getting the footage for pizza and then making sure that you had everything you needed for this real street part i think it just all comes down to like just staying busy and I, I never try to stay in one place I this uh, all the pizza dudes live up in Sacramento so I would just go up there for a couple weeks and then I would come back down and film with Chris and I think just like not focusing on one thing putting like all that like pressure into one thing just I don't know I just kind of just like 
that's how I operate. I just like to skate and I just like to stay on the go. So it wasn't like too difficult to balance both of those things out. When you look at the guys who are judging this contest and, you know, there's just so much skateboarding uh, that they, they, just throughout these voices, these authoritarian roles in skateboarding. And it's a few guys that you guys know really, really well, but it's still got to like be crazy to think like when Chris Cole is watching your skateboarding and being complimentary and saying like, I don't know how he did things like that. That's still got to be surreal to hear someone like set that talk about your skateboarding in that regard. Definitely. Like just seeing that episode, I watched it yesterday and uh, just see, like hearing him say that was like an honor, you know, like I looked up to that dude for a long time and it's crazy that he would say that type of stuff about me. So it's definitely, it feels good. And I, I have to, I have to ask you guys, to me, it was amazing the prank there at the end uh, when you guys are just filming your on cameras Chris, I'll start with you. I, I think you were pretty confident in like what you guys brought to the table, but you don't know because you're not watching everybody else's footage. But when the silver medals first come out, and if you haven't watched it, please, you can catch the whole show, I think, on X Games' YouTube channel, uh, The Real Street Show. But the way you two were awarded your medals was it was first you were given the silver medals, and you played it off like, oh, okay, sick, sick, sick. But I know there was a part of you that was like, okay, what the hell? What's going on? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, you kind of, they hit us up and they're like, hey, we have to meet up and, you know, uh, we're going to film this thing. You made top three. So obviously, you know, you get a little excited and you hope like, all right, like, I hope we won. And I feel good. Um, and then the whole time, like, I don't know about Chase, but I kept looking around. Is Muska going to run out? Is, is another <laughs> pro going to run out? So I kept looking over my shoulder and I was kind of nervous about that. And I, I'm not a fan of surprises. I mean, I was, I was just like, I was in shock when Muska came up and, and, and said, said my name. I was like, this guy knows my name. That's crazy. And, uh, and then he pulled out the silver and it was just like, you know, I, I'm not going to lie. I was a little bit bummed and a little bit let down because it's, uh, you obviously want to win and, and do your best, but I was still just to be top three and just have the opportunity to do it. I mean, we were, we're so stoked. But then when they took him away and then gave us gold, I was just like, dude, that's so mean. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not stuck on these surprises that they keep doing. Yeah, Chase, what, how was it like for you? Because I thought you played it off so humbly. You were like, all right, silver. And then when the gold came out, it was just like such genuine appreciation for the moment. That was really neat to see. Yeah, dude. I mean, I had already, like me and Chris already accepted we got second. And uh, mm -hmm. there was like a little bit of time where it was just like, dang like all right yeah this is over like we got second so like I think I think it made it that much gnarlier when you've already accepted something and then it just changes like that like I was as you could tell in the footage I was tripping dude I, I like wanted to run around like I had this burst of energy I just wanted to <laughs> run a mile I was tripping dude that was it it was crazy you guys brought up last year in 2019 when you guys won and Muska rolled up at that point um did you guys have any idea when Muska came up like that he was going to bring out the medals or were you guys just like, holy shit, Chad Muska's here. All no, right. We, we were, yeah, we were actually, that day was to shoot a DC commercial that was lined up and we had no idea at all. Like no idea. So um, again, like we had no idea Muska was even involved in the show. We had no idea any of that was happening. So we were just in complete shock. That's so funny uh how about talk to me chris the, the idea of the filmer skater collaboration and just how vital that is for anything you're shooting whether it's a you know a clip for instagram or a full-length part for a team video and in this case you know an actual video contest that's so important and you've had the luxury of doing it with so many different guys what's it like working with chase somebody who you've known for a long time but now getting to do this contest together the last couple of years what's it like working with chase versus some of the other skaters you've worked with in this contest i mean chase has been absolutely amazing i mean he's he's always had trust he's always done the right stuff he's always he's just always been a guy that i've been a fan of and the way that his work ethic is and and the way he goes about stuff and and his passion for skateboarding alone is just that's what I love is that he's out there doing it because he absolutely loves it. You know, he's not doing it for a contest. He's, he's just doing it because he generally loves to go out skateboarding. He loves to film. He loves to get tricks. Um, it's, and I have a good time filming him. It's just like in a normal work world, you, 
you want to work with people that you enjoy working with and you do a better job together. So um, that's, that's the boat I'm in with Chase is that I love working with them. I have a blast every time. Yeah. And it's really neat chase to see because obviously the video parts and the spreads in the magazines have been great over the last few years, but it wasn't necessarily like, Oh, are we going to see chase Webb competing in all these various contests? And then this contest, which has been around for now a decade plus, which is crazy to think about, um, but when did like real street start to get on your radar chases? Like, you know what? That's something I think I could do. I would like to do and maybe even thrive at. Yeah. I think the, I've always watched them throughout all the years. I'm a skate nerd. So I watch every bit of skate content, con- content that comes out. But, uh, I think it was like the first year that Cole Wilson won where it was like, Whoa, I want to be in this. And I remember I hit up Chris and I was like, dude, let's do a real street part. And uh, it just, like, took a couple of years, I think. But, yeah, I think the first year Cole Wilson won, I don't know what year that was, but that's when I was like, I want to be in this. This looks tight. The handrails obviously go without saying. But, it did, I mean, I know you've talked about you've always liked handrails. You've skated them since you were six years old practically. Isn't it – it's wild to me to just sort of watch your stature raise in skateboarding over the last few years, Chase, and, and it seems to me that everybody in skateboarding is like nobody shreds handrails right now like Chase Webb. Like did you always envision being that guy that everybody's talking about when it comes to skating any sort of rail? No, uh, I didn't really think about it like that. I just like – it's like more of an addiction thing. It's like how, how much gnarlier can it get, and I, I like that. I like – uh you know, oh, I, I did nine kings or whatever, however it is. It's just more of like, it's just, I like doing it. And uh, yeah, I just, I'm really addicted to like skating rails like that. I don't know. You mentioned something in the show, I remember last year, where you said that before any sort of big trick or any sort of big rail or obstacle that you, you visualize kind of like the worst that could happen right like mm-hmm. what bone could i break or how bad could this go for me um how do you like I, i'm just different skateboarders think about things differently right some mm-hmm. think that way others are like no way i can't even let that negativity like enter my brain or else it's going to screw me for the rest of the day as i'm doing this trick but that's has seemed to propel you to where you are now so you're telling me like even if it takes you you know, a hundred tries to get a trick. Is that, are you running through that before every single attempt? It's more or less like when I'm uh, skating stuff where it has to be done in like five tries, like, you know, like if it's something where it's like a big rail where there's no escape route or whatever it may be. Yeah. Like I definitely think of that type of stuff, like the bad stuff. And I think it just helps me like, just get it out of the way. Like, I'm not going to let that happen. And honestly, when you're, by the time you throw down for a trick and you're like already going for it, you're completely blacked out. You're not thinking about that stuff anymore. So I think it's more of just like a, something in my head's like, all right, you're not going to do that, but you got to think about it. Like just in case it does happen, it's just brains work. Everyone's brain works different. And that's just how I go about it. Let's talk about inspiration. I mean, you obviously talk about like Cole Wilson's part that really was like, dude, I want to go for this. What about just video parts in general, whether it's a team video or or anybody's personal part over the years that like maybe first inspired you to either get into skateboarding or when you first started skating and you were just like, this is the part I'm going to watch before I go out and skate. What What is that for you, Chase? Like what video like yeah. got me sparked? Uh mm-hmm. Trans World in Bloom. That was like the first video I like remember religiously like watching all the time. And that yeah. video has like a lot of uh different like styles of skating, like Tony Trujillo, and then you have like young P Rod in that and like just like so much to like look up to and like get hyped off. How about for you, Chris? I mean, obviously you you skate and you've got on the film side pretty early on, but what was it? Uh, and you've got to work on some pretty incredible films. Uh, obviously, we all remember Fully Flared way back when. But like for you, what was that video part or that video that just sort of cemented, hey, this is what I want to do for a living? I'd say uh, Transworld, Transworld's uh, Modus Operandi was it for me. I mean, I, I watched videos with my friends all the time growing up, but that was the one that I watched and I was like, wait, this is edited 
better and this is filmed better and it's just they had generators and lights like I could just I didn't realize it and I, I I watched it and I could just feel it you know I could just feel that the whole thing was was better than a normal video so um that that's the one that stood out for me Ty Evans has obviously like been a hero of mine and he took Vander's wing and brought me on for fully flared and and taught me how to film really from from the beginning Chase, the challenges of filming for a video part, whether it's for, say, DC or pizza versus real street, like, like, is it a different type of pressure to get any particular trick? Or do you feel firmer timelines now that you've done video parts for various companies or even a contest like that? Like, what's the, how does it feel preparing and going through it this versus, you know, like a team video? Uh, I think for real street, you don't like, you only get a minute. So it's like, you want mostly hammers, you know, like you don't want like any of the, like in between stuff, the fillers. So like real street is this like, all right, you plan 10 gnarly tricks and like have a little bit of variety and that's like real street filming. And then I think filming like a, for a pizza part, it's just kind of like you, you add like all the little miscellaneous things that you wouldn't put in like a real street part that's what i think is the difference so i think real street i mean in the in a full length like pizza video or something you're still gonna want the hammers but there's a lot of like different style of like skating i feel like that gets put into those projects instead of a real street one and how about for you chris how's the mentality from being behind the lenses when you're forced to you know, quickly put together as much footage as you can for a minute clip versus filming a team video. So I, I enjoy it. I'm a fan over, you know, for quality over quantity. Um, but the goal of mine has always been to make it feel like it's a full length video. So I think when you watch the parts that I've worked on, they might only be 60 seconds, but the goal is that it feels like a full length part. Um, and I feel like that that's kind of always been my strategy doing these over the years. How about your gear approach? Like, does it change when you're filming one skateboarder versus another or depending on the project? How does that roll with you for Chris? So, I mean, obviously like, you know, the tricks the most important part, but uh, I'm a huge fan of, of camera gear and, and quality, you know, and Chase uh, is actually one of those few skaters that's a huge fan of the red camera. So a lot of the stuff was filmed on red. Um, I think when he did his project with Ty Evans, like he fell in love with it even more. So, you know, I, I brought out my like GH5 DSLR a few times and there's been times where Chase is like, hey, like, where's the red camera? Why aren't you bringing it out? So, uh, so you know, I, every time I work with a skater, I definitely try to try to work with what they're hyped on and kind of like what their, their look is also and what's going to fit their part and their vibe. Looking back at the video for this year, there's just there's there's so many it, every trick is memorable and we can kind of like do some sort of analysis on it. But like for you, Chase, is there, when you look back at it, is there one particular trick or obstacle or feature that you're like most proud of that you guys were able to get? The kickflip for sure. That one meant so much to me just because that wasn't just like a one day thing. That was like, like, or that was like a year thing because I had it right. in my head, you know? So it was like, all right, now I got to step up and try it. And then the first day was like two hours and the next day was like another hour. And then, yeah, that one was just like so much of a mental and physical battle. And all it took was one stick, which is the funniest thing about the whole thing. But yeah, that one definitely like I worked the hardest for and just the feeling of rolling away. I like just ran like I was just I don't know. You get that crazy feeling when, when you do something like that, you get a feeling that you can't even explain. You're just like, it's over. Like, yeah, that one takes the cake. And how about at Hollywood high, uh, when you guys showed up and there was the chain around the rail, like was your instinct like, ah, shit, we got to cut this. Or when did it be like, you know what, actually, why don't I 50, 50, Ollie, 50, 50 it again. Like did that seeing the chain sort of shake up what you were going to bring to the table for that trick? Uh, the fun, uh, yeah, the funny thing about that is I went there like a year and a half prior to that and I was in town for like a video premiere and there was a chain on it just like that. Like just the school and must have knobbed it or whatever. And that's when I initially got the idea. And then when me and Chris went back to do that, there was no chain on it. The chain was long gone and I had to make a run to the Home Depot and get a master <laughs> lock. I'm not gonna even lie, man. Like you got to do what you got to do sometimes. Yeah. But 
I mean, it was like that at one point in time. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to recreate it. And that was just, that's just what you got to do sometimes. No, man. I mean, obviously that's been a, that's been a mainstay in so many different parts and, and to see it like that and to take a different approach, man, I, I applaud you guys for it. I, I think that's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. I was stoked to uh, get something at that, that rail that hasn't been done. You know, that thing's been tampered with everything's been done. So. Well, you talk about everything being done, especially in Southern California, where so much of you know, real street, obviously all parts over the years have been filmed, but just think about every video you can imagine in skateboarding over decades. It's like the ability to think outside the box and find that new fresh spot. I guess I'll start with you, Chris, because you've been a part of so many projects, the challenges of thinking outside of the box of like, where else can we film? Especially for a contest like this. Yeah. Yeah, it's a tough one. And, and I mean, you bring that point up, that's hard because, you know, um, what a lot of people might not know is that when you go to a skate spot, you're not supposed to film the trick that somebody else has already done. You're supposed to one up it. Um, one challenge that we had doing Real Street was looking at all the other skaters and, and going, wait, that guy's really good at nose bump on handrails or this guy's really good at 50 50s. So we had to kind of make sure that we weren't going to film something that was similar, that was the same spot, that was, uh, you know, we didn't want our last trick to be like the same as let's say clash trick or something. So it's a, it's a challenge and you don't know until all the parts come out. Yeah. For yeah. You, how about for you, uh, Chase, just, just having to like, think about it. And like I said before, you had just been filming probably late last year, all throughout early this year on trying to finish up your pizza part and now start to kind of like change your mentality of like, all right, got this contest. Where are we going to film? Yeah. I mean, SoCal is definitely hard, like everyone knows that, but there's always going to be spots out there and you just, yeah, you got to think outside the box. I definitely had some ideas in my head, like the 50-50 Dixon front board, like I feel like that was just good because I don't think anyone else is going to do that. So yeah, like Chris was saying, you don't want to just nose blunt like a big rail for your last trick and then possibly someone do that as well. So I think it just like, just kind of, yeah, try to, like, do something that is different. Where was that, like, that, uh, the horseshoe rail that, like, you feeble grinded in this mm. one? Where was, where was that? that? That was in L.A., and uh, I don't know how that thing's never been skated, but, but I found that off that Instagram. That was funny. That's that was wild. funny because we ended up going there a day that he tried the kickflip, and he, did, he couldn't do the kickflip, and he was, like, freaking out and he's like i can't do the kickflip today we'll go to this other rail that i saw and he ended up doing the people that <laughs> Dude, day, so that, that's so psycho because i'm like why have i never seen this in a video part before like this is such a sick rail yeah it's definitely so unique and that goes back, that's crazy because like yeah you could say socal has no spots but <laughs> that thing's never been skated and, yeah. you know that thing's been there for 20 years i bet so you just gotta search and you'll find the gems Chase, I, I remember, you know, especially in the early days of uh, of like Street League back in the day, and you'd be running with a crew with like Nija and those guys. You still skate with Nija? Do you keep up with him a lot? Yeah, from time to time we'll skate. I uh, when it was just raining a few weeks ago a lot, I was like down at a skate park, and yeah, we'll uh, we'll link up time to time. But we're just like on two different pages. He's doing all of his stuff. We're just we're both grinding, you know. So, but we're we're still there. Yeah, it's funny Taking to think. It. Of, yeah, it's just cool to think about, you know, you guys being like 15, 16 years old together, you know, partying, hanging out, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then it's cool to see these different routes, right? Where, you know, Nigel's obviously the legend is is still going. You yeah. know, as far as every contest. Nig Sorry, Nigel go ahead. Actually introduced, Nigel actually introduced me to Chase. So that's yeah. what's super oh, cool. Oh, really? Too. No yeah. way. How did that? Yeah. How did that even? Yeah. I should have asked that. Well, how did you guys? Yeah, first so, I just assume it was DC <laughs> at some point. Well, um, so Nigel was on DC and I was working on his fade to black part a bunch. Yep. And uh, obviously Chase being friends with Nigel, he just started rolling out with us. And next thing you know, he's just wearing DCs. And I'm like, whoa, this dude rips. Like he gets flow from DC. And I just started throwing him in the van. And I mean, dude, that's probably been, I don't know, eight years solid of him just coming over to my house every weekend and jumping in. Yep, yeah, my mom. Awesome. I didn't even have a license. My mom would drive me to Chris's house like every Saturday and Sunday. Get there at eight in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
That's where wow. it all began. I started early. Oh, uh, well, I remember, I remember meeting Chase Webb probably about that age at uh, some probably street league after party in like Kansas yeah. City or Arizona. <laughs> like, this kid is nuts. Uh, <laughs> So uh, I guess last question for you guys, and I, I don't know how the rules work. I guess I should know this um, as far as being able to defend your title uh, again, a, a potential three-peat. Uh, if that is in the cards, if that is in the mix, if you get the invitation back, I, I imagine that's something you guys would would welcome with open arms. Definitely. Yeah. I'll um, go for yeah, it again. Three, three-peat's never been done, so that'd be a, that'd be a fun new challenge. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I got it on record. Like I said, I don't make the rules. Maybe we can just pass this on to Sinclair, to Mike yep. Sinclair, and uh, and he will. He's the overlord. He will make that decision, I suppose. But uh, guys, I can't thank you enough. Congratulations again. Back to back gold medals. Uh, this was a treat, man. This one was so much fun to watch, and and we know how much work you guys put into it. So, congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks, fellas.